Welcome back, everybody. Talking more RV sales process today. And today we're going to be talking about communication, right? Because the only way we can get our customers to lower their guards, lower their defenses, and be honest with us in the deal, right? And we need honesty in a deal because you've probably heard the old adage that, you know, customers lie, right? You know, customers, you know, say whatever they want type deal. And that can be true. Uh, because if you're a bad salesperson and your customer doesn't trust you, then by default, what they're going to do is they're going to try to save face a little bit by lying to you and just kind of backing out the deal that way. They'll say something to you like, yeah, you know, well, we need to think about it or I need to go home and talk to my wife or, you know, uh, you know, we're not ready to buy yet or, you know, one of the million things that they tell you. But that's really just your customer's way to kind of back out of the deal without, you know, saying, Hey, you sucked as a salesperson. I don't trust you. And I don't really want to spend my money with you. Right. Because humans are by default, not that confrontational, right? We don't always, we don't love to be in confrontations. We don't like to essentially tell people that, you know, they didn't do a good job. You know, a lot of the times we'll say, Hey, you did a great job, but you know, it's just not time for us. We're going to, you know, think about it and we'll, you know, we'll give you a call back. We'll give you a call back uh, whenever we're ready to buy. You know, that's kind of what we do as a customer. And we do it all the way through and through. It doesn't matter if it's a cell phone. It doesn't matter if it's an RV, a car. It doesn't matter what it is, right? If it's a real estate agent that we get, you know, working with and, you know, two deals into the agreement, we were like, yeah, I don't really like this real estate agent. Some of the time we're just going to be like, oh, well, you know, we're not actually going to look for any houses anymore. We're just going to stop looking and, you know, we just uh, we're going to take it as a sign that, you know, right now is just not the time for us to buy. And we'll contact you later whenever we're ready to buy, you know, a house. So they'll back out of the deal that way. And three years later, two years later, a year later, they buy a house with another real estate agent. Right. They didn't call you. They didn't tell you because they didn't want the confrontation. Okay. So, you know, the way that we're going to get our customers to learn more or to communicate with us better is by listening to them more than we talk. Okay. And I know that's hard for a lot of salespeople out there. Salespeople sometimes get this habit of always, you know, wanting to talk. They want to talk about the features. They want to talk about the benefits. Sometimes they want to talk about new sports and weather, and they just want to say things that don't really pertain to the deal because they feel like just talking to their customers, building rapport, but that's not really building rapport with your customer. Your customer didn't come to you to listen to new sports and weather. They didn't come to you to have a friend. They have friends at home. They have people they like to hang out with at home. They have friends, they have family, they have cousins, right? They're not trying to hang out with their RV salesperson. Okay, so they're not coming to you to talk about sports or the Browns or fishing. I guess maybe fishing, they might ask you some of your favorite campground spots or something, but we still got to bring it back to the deal. But my point is this, if you're, you know, go to your doctor, let's just say we go to our doctor and every time we go to our doctor, all they talk to us about is new sports and weather, or they tell us about the new medicines that came out and they tell us about the, the, the new discoveries and heart valve systems and um, the new lungs that have came out and so on and so forth. But they never actually address any of the issues that I have as a patient, right? I don't care about lungs. I don't need lungs. Maybe I'm there because of, you know, a runny nose. And all they do the whole time is talk new sports and weather and then talk about heart valves and replacement lungs and knee replacements or something. You'd be like, I'm never going to this doctor again. You'd leave that office. You'd say, thanks, doc, um, you know, for whatever. And then you'd leave and you'd go find a new doctor. Why? Why would you find a new doctor? That's what you do when, you know, customers come to you as an RV salesperson. That's kind of how you talk to them in a sense. You know, why would they go get a new doctor? Why wouldn't they just buy, you know, buy what you're, you're selling, right? The answer is, is because you didn't add any value to their life. You wasted their time, right? And because humans aren't confrontational, they back out of the deal in a nice kind of way and then never talk to you again. 
And you as a salesperson, you might be sitting there thinking like, oh, wow, man, I did a great job with that guy. You know, he, you know, they, they love the Browns just like I do. And they like to the fish just like I do. And he's really going to come buy an RV for me in five years. I can't wait for five years to pass. So this guy can come buy an RV for me. Right. But that's just an ignorant salesperson. That's a salesperson that didn't add value when the customer was in front of them. And now, you know, they're just on to the next. Right. So if we're talking to customers, communicating with customers, what we need to do is be asking questions that start with who, what, when, where, why and how. And when we ask these questions, we need to stop talking and we need to listen to our customer actively listening. Right. We should be hearing what they're saying. The fact that, you know, they're looking for a bunkhouse travel trailer. Um, you know, their truck pulls 6,000 pounds and they want to travel the United States and their favorite activities are kayaking and fishing and cornhole. Um, and, the, you know, they're, one of their goals as a family is to travel to all 50 states. And, you know, they've been to 13 of them. So, you know, they still got 37 to go. And, you know, the 13 states that they went to were these states. Like we should be listening to our customers talk about their emotions and what they're trying to accomplish and what drives them to want to own an RV, right? Because again, RVs, they're, you know, we have two mortgages or one mortgage, two cars. We have soccer practice. We have um, kids sports that we pay for and, you know, all the different things that come into life, right? We already have that. And now we got to add an RV into the mix. Sometimes that's too much to handle. Right. But if we communicate well with our customers and we learn their emotions and we ask questions and we actively listen to their answers and we know what drives them, we know where they want to go. We know how important it is to travel with their kids, with their family, with their friends. Then, you know, those kinds of things become priceless in the deal. And that's how we're going to close the deal. So when we're communicating with customers, when we're meeting customers, um, you know, on the showroom floor or we're getting our call-ins, or we're reaching out to our internet leads that we get, or you know, however the system works at your dealership, one of the things we need to focus on more is asking more questions that start with who, what, when, where, why, and how, and listening to our customers' answers. Let them talk, right? You know, there's if you're a salesperson, and you ask a question and then there's that silence, right? You know, and, you know, maybe you ask a, a customer something like, hey, you know, uh, where do you want to go with this RV? And they sit there and they do that kind of silent thing and they look at you and they don't say anything, right? And then what happens typically is a salesperson will jump right back in and say something else. So they'll say, hey, where do you want to go with the RV? Customer will sit there, not say nothing. That awkward silence happens. And then, um, you know, the salesperson will say something like, you know, do you want to go to the beach? Do you want to go to the, um, you know, you know, canyons? Do you want to go to Mount Rushmore? You know, where do you want to go? Right. And then they'll start talking. They'll say, oh, yeah, you want to we want to go to Mount Rushmore. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful place. I've been to Mount Rushmore before. Man, I love seeing it. It's amazing. I can't believe how they carved them. It's so beautiful how they did it. And it's so symmetrical or, you know, whatever the case is. And where else do you want to go? And then, oh, I want to go to, I want to go to the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's a beautiful place too. I see pictures, right? So you see, you're asking your customer questions, but you're interjecting right back in and you're not actively listening to what they're saying. You're not even actually letting them say anything. You're just like trying to connect with them in weird ways. Right. No, what you need to do when you get that awkward silence and you say something like, hey, where are you going to go with this RV? You just want to shut up, look at them and wait for them to talk, because as awkward and weird as that silence is for you as the salesperson, it's just as awkward for the customer. So just like you want to talk, they want to talk as well. But salespeople have a problem of talking first. Right. We need to stop talking first. We need to ask questions first, and then we need to let our customers talk, okay? And then we need to listen and go from there, okay? We need to ask them, you know, where do you want to go with that RV? 
oh, you know, Chris, you know, I want to go to the Grand Canyon and we really want to go see Mount Rushmore and Yellowstone is, you know, the top place on my wife's list to go to go take a look at. So, you know, we're definitely going to make our way over to Yellowstone. And, you know, one of our favorite things that we like to do when we go to these campgrounds is, you know, we like to kayak. We like to fish. We like to hang out in the outdoors and hike. My wife loves hiking and running trails. So, you know, a lot of the time she'll hike the hike up the mountains or the hills or she'll go, you know, run through the towpath in the morning, you know, while I drink my coffee by the fire or watching the sunrise or blah, blah, blah. Right. So now we're learning from our customers and our potential you know, clients, you know, what actually makes them tick, what they care about, what they like to do when they get there. And, and in turn, what we're learning is how to present them the perfect RV, right? Because if they like to do these things, maybe we need room for kayaks if their favorite thing to do is kayak, right? Or maybe their favorite thing to do is fish with the kids. And, you know, they have two kids, so maybe we need a bunkhouse, right? So we're learning about what our customers do with the RV. One, so that we can show our customer that we care about their needs, about their wants, about what actually matters to them, because customers, humans, we're selfish. Customers come into an RV dealership. They don't care about you. They don't care about your dealership. The only thing they care about is themselves. How am I bettering my life? How is an RV going to add value to my life? Right. And if you're not able to show them how the RV is going to add value to their life, then they're not going to buy from you. But if you do show how it adds value, then they'll buy from you every single time. And that's why we got to communicate and listen more instead of talking so much, because the only way we learn about our customers, the only way we can figure out their emotions, their needs, their wants and how to add value into their life is by asking who, what, when, where, why, and how questions and letting our customers talk about what they like, what they do, where they want to go, who's going to be going with them, what they're going to do when they get to the campground, what they eat at the campground, what their favorite activities are, you know, just all these different questions. There's a million different questions that can start with who, what, when, where, why, and how. And those will always be designed on getting your customer to talk about what they care about, okay? And that is the secret to closing more deals is providing value to your customers in a form that they care about, okay? No one cares that you've been to Mount Rushmore before, okay? Nobody cares that you've seen the Grand Canyon. Nobody cares that you're a Browns fan, okay? Sure, you can say little things like that, I mean, like if someone was said, oh, I want to go to Mount Rushmore, I might say like, oh, I've been there. It's beautiful. What are you going to do when you go there? That's the only thing that I'm if I'm and I wouldn't even say that I don't I wouldn't tell them that I've been there before. Right. Because I don't like it's kind of braggadocious in a sense, like people don't like people that brag. Right. So I'm not going to tell my customer all these different places I've been unless it really pertains to the deal. Maybe they ask, I want to go to Mount Rushmore. Have you ever been there, Chris? Now I'm going to say something because they directly asked. I'm going to say, yeah, I've been to Mount Rushmore. It was beautiful. I actually took an RV. That was very similar. Uh, or I took an RV. It was a bunkhouse. Me and my wife or me and my kids, blah, 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 went. We had an amazing time. I would say something like that. And then I'd go right back to them. What are you going to do at Mount Rushmore? Boom. You see? So, yeah, I did. I took an RV. You see how I threw that in there? Because I want them to realize that, hey, listen, I did it too. Right? I took an RV. I went and saw Mount Rushmore. What are you going to do when you do that after you buy this RV and go to Mount Rushmore? Right. But that's the thing. Like, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, yeah, we went to Mount Rushmore. You know, we got a nice little resort right outside of it. Um, it had a beautiful little pool. And, you know, we got free breakfast every day. And, you know, me and the family, we woke up every day and we went camping and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, who knows? Right. Like, I'm not going to go into that with my potential customer. Okay, because they don't care and it doesn't benefit the deal, right? What benefits the deal is asking my customer their emotions, learning what's going to add value to my customer's life, not things that I've done. Okay, 
So, and that's why I say communication is more listening than talking. Because if a customer says, hey, Chris, have you ever been to Mount Rushmore? It opens me up to talk really as much as I want. If I've been there, I could say, yeah, I could tell you for 30 or 45 minutes about our whole trip and what me and the family did and blah, blah, blah. But do you think they care to hear about that? No. Okay. So I keep it short and sweet. Yeah. Me and my kids, my wife went, we had a lot of fun. We stayed in an RV. We had a bunkhouse. It was about 28 feet. It was perfect. And we had a lot of fun. And Mount Rushmore is beautiful. What are you going to do when you get there? Right? Boom. That's how I'm going to handle it. Because now I said maybe two sentences. And I said, what are you going to do when you get there? And they're going to say, oh, man, that sounds amazing. You know what we're going to do? We, we got this little campground that we saw. You know, we were looking it up online the other day. And there's a campground called Johnny, you know, Johnny on the spot. Uh, right by Mount Rushmore and, and the spots there are pretty inexpensive. So we're going to get a, you know, get a spot at Johnny on the spot, right by, right by Mount Rushmore. They got free breakfast as well. They got two pools there. Um, they have a river so you can kayak while you're there. Um, so we're going to go there. We're going to stay at Johnny on the spot. We're going to go see Mount Rushmore. We're going to kayak. We're going to fish and we're going to have a lot of fun. And once we leave there, we're going to go to the Grand Canyon. Wow. So you see, I spoke two sentences and pushed it back onto my customer. What are you going to do when you go there? And then they're now talking and building rapport. That's real rapport, right? Learning your customer's needs, learning where they want to go, getting them excited, talking to them, just learning what they want to do, who they want to go with, what drives them, what is going to make them wake up tomorrow and want to go camping with their kids and their loved ones to Mount Rushmore, right? How important is it to you, Mr. And Mrs. Customer to go to take your five and seven year old kids to Mount Rushmore before they turn eight, right? Or we had a good question the other day, Juan Perez, how many more summers do you have with your kids before they leave the nest? right? How many more camping trips do you have with your kids before they leave the nest, right? Because if you're a parent and you want to start camping with your kids, the truth is, as once they get older, when they get into high school, when they start playing sports, when they start getting friends, they're not going to go camping as much, right? So if a goal is to camp with our kids, but we keep putting it off and wasting time and buying in five or 10 years, we probably won't end up camping with our kids. So Mr. and Mrs. Customer, how important is it for you to camp with your kids before they leave the nest? Well, you know what, Chris, that's a good question. That's very important to us. You know, we watch our kids grow up. They grow up so fast. It seems like yesterday they were just, you know, little peanuts, right? And now today... They're full grown kids. And, you know, we want to spend as much time with them as possible. Right. Okay. And then uh, yeah, I'm going to dig into it. I'm going to say something else like, well, how much time do you want to spend with them? How many more trips do you think you're going to have before they have to leave the nest? Well, you know, Chris, man, we probably only have maybe two summers left. That's maybe seven camping trips. Now we see the the top, the clocks are turning on. Now they're starting to understand, wow, I got seven camping trips left with my kid and I'm thinking about not buying an RV today. That's a mistake because I want to spend seven camping trips with my kids. I need to buy an RV today. So you might say something like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, Mr. and Miss Customer, but you're not going to be able to camp with your kids much longer. You only have seven more trips with them. So if you really care about camping with your kids, like I know you do, then you have to buy this RV today. It's the perfect one. It's going to, you know, fit you for kayaking and going down the river and taking the poles and all the stuff you want to do. And that way you can spend time with your kids now so that you don't regret not spent, not getting time to spend with them when they're older and they, and they leave the nest sign right here. And that customer is so emotionally attached to the deal. And the truth is, is that you're adding tons of value to their life because that's the facts. Who doesn't want to spend time with their kids? Who doesn't want to take their kids across the United States and go see Mount Rushmore before they leave the nest? Who is Who honestly puts money above their kids? Not many people. I guess maybe there's some crazy people out there, but you know, I have a five-year-old daughter and there's not a single amount of money on this planet that I would put ahead of her, okay? So if my goal is to take my daughter 
around the United States in an RV, then $200, $300, $400 a month is not going to stop me from doing that. Okay, but sometimes as life goes on, we don't take those same things into perspective. We kind of just put life off. We say, you know, I'll just buy the RV in five or 10 years. You know, I'll get it when I retire. And then we retire, we still don't have an RV. Or five years go by, we still don't have an RV. Our kids leave the nest, we still don't have an RV. And we didn't get to do any of the stuff that we dreamed of because, well, time has taken over at this point, right? So to be a good RV salesperson, we have to be communicating asking questions, adding value to our customer's life, and really learning what our, what makes our customers tick so that we can close the deal. Okay. On the other part of that, if you're not talking to enough customers, then that's another problem because the only way you're going to meet or exceed your sales goals as a dealership or as a salesperson is by talking to more customers, increasing your closing percentage, and decreasing your time spent per deal. So if your dealership, if your business needs more customer leads, that's what we do here at IMR. We can pretty much double your internet leads and most of the time the first month, but if not the first month and the first couple months, we can usually double your internet leads so your sales team is talking to more customers. Okay, so if your sales team is not talking to enough customers, give me a call directly. I'd love to help you get more customer leads at your dealership or business. You can reach me at 330-703-3930. Again, 330-703-3930. Give me a call if you need more leads for your dealership or business. I'd love to help you out there. Um, if you need some sales training for your sales team, whether it be for your dealership or business, I can help you out there as well. Um, there's many different ways we can do it. We have an online sales training program. Um, that you can become a part of. You go to sellmorelivemore.net. Maybe you're an individual salesperson that wants an RV sales training program. Well, we got one for you. Go to sellmorelivemore.net, sign up for the program. It's only around nine bucks a month or a hundred dollars for the whole program. So it's rather inexpensive and it's going to give you over 40 plus videos um, and hours of content that you can watch. And it'll walk you right through the RV sales process from A to Z. So go to sellmorelivemore.net, buy our um, online sales training program. Um, if you are a GM or a sales manager or an owner of a business and you want to talk about how to get sales training for your whole sales team, then give me a call directly. We can talk about in-person training, virtual training, and, and you know the different ways you want to do it. Uh, give me a call, 330-703-3930. Again, 330-703-3930. And again, if you need more customer leads, give me a call as well, because that's what my agency specializes in. Um, if you would like to read, go grab the book, Sell More, Live More Sales Training. You can get that from Barnes & Noble. You can get it from Amazon. So the link is in the description. Um, go buy that book. That way, if you like to read, you can get the RV or the Sell More, Live More Sales Process A to Z. You can sharpen up them skills um, and you can close more deals. So uh, remember, while we're out there at those campgrounds, or I'm sorry, while we're at our dealerships, while we're working at the business, while we're talking to customers, let's make sure that we are asking questions, communicating more, and listening more to what our customers have to say. Because that, at the end of the day, is going to help us add value. It's going to help us learn their emotions. And it's going to you know, give us the information that we need so that we can close the deal and truly add value to our customer's life. Remember, the only time you actually add value into your customer's life is when you close the deal because you're actually then solving problems that they have. You're allowing them to go camping with their loved ones and go to Mount Rushmore with their kids before they leave the nest. You're allowing them to live out their dreams after you close the sale. If you don't close the sale, you let your customer go back home, you let them live the same life that they're living with no value add, no camping with the kids, no camping with the loved ones. And then when it time when it comes time for the kids to leave the nest and your customers don't buy the RV, now it's your fault that your customers didn't get to camp with their kids because you weren't able to add value into their life as an RV salesperson. Okay, so let's get serious about this. We have an important job to do as an RV salesperson, and that's adding 
value into our customer's life and helping them live those priceless memories and those priceless times and those trips that we cannot get back with no matter how much money we spend, right? That's what we sell as RV salespeople. We sell dreams. We sell travel. We sell memories. Okay. That is important. Maybe the most important thing. Okay. So don't take it lightly as an RV salesperson. Okay. Ask the questions, listen to our customers, learn their emotions, learn their needs, learn their wants, and add value into their life. Thank you for being here for this RV sales process. We're going to be talking about it all year long. If you haven't given us a like on Facebook, hop over to Facebook, type in Infinite Media Resources, and give us a like. That way you can be there for the different things that we talk about. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, hop over to YouTube, type in Infinite Media Resources, and Hit that little subscribe button. That way you can be there for all the videos we put out. You know, again, go to Amazon, grab the book, sell more, live more sales training. I'll see you on the next one.